Mr. Abbott here and time for another boring activity explanation. This one is honestly based on uh, the igneous rock identification chart from page six of the earth science reference tables, but it goes into a little bit more detail uh, in terms of which minerals and the actual density of each mineral. So I like to show you the lab sheets. Your first lab sheet looks like this. It's got the igneous rock chart, except down on the bottom, instead of having the symbols for each minerals, it's numbered each mineral from one through seven. So those seven minerals um, actually are found in a lot of the rocks on the igneous rock chart. At the bottom of the first page, you'll see it gives you the exact density of each of the minerals. So to complete this activity, you need this first page, the back of it's blank, and then you need the second page where you're going to show all of your calculations. So your second page has, I guess it's a total of four on the front and three on the back. So you'll be analyzing seven igneous rocks from A through G and you're trying to calculate the total density for each of these rock samples. So I'd like to just look at the original igneous rock first, uh, igneous rock chart, give you a couple of terms that we will use in this discussion, and then we'll get into actually measuring and calculating each percentage. Now, when you're looking at the chart, the rocks are found at the top, but this chart on the bottom is really what we're going to be focusing on. This is showing you the different minerals that are found in the rocks on this chart. Now, all of these are silicate minerals. So every single mineral on this chart is a silicate, which means if you looked at the formula, they would have silicon and oxygen in the formula. Okay. When you look at your lab, the way they're going to number these is number one is potassium feldspar, number two is quartz, number three is going to be plagioclase, number four is pyroxene, number five represents biotite, six is olivine, and seven is amphibole. Now, one key concept with this is even though these minerals are silicates, they definitely have different compositions and different densities. Okay, terms that you should have know you should know are facet ah, felsic versus mafic. Now, most geologists consider this first column from here to here to represent felsic rocks. When you look at the word mafic, the minerals become more mafic as you move over, but frequently this is the column, the one with gabbro, basalt, and diabase, which would be considered mafic igneous rocks. The one in the middle, these have an intermediate composition, and this last column that only has two rocks in it, dunite and peridotite, uh, these are ultramafic igneous rocks. Now, when we look at this lab, what you're attempting to do is we know that different samples of the same rock can have different percentages of each mineral. So we're going to look at two felsic, two intermediate, two mafic, and one ultra mafic rock. So we're going to look at seven samples, and when we look at those seven samples, what you have to do is you have to estimate the percentage of each mineral 
and calculate the density for each rock. Now, when we actually do this, you're going to see it's sort of like making a profile on topographic map. You're going to mark off each segment and then slide it to the side to sort of figure out what each percentage is on the scale. So I'd like to actually start working with a lab. All right, here's our lab. Maybe I can zoom out a little bit on this, give you a little bit wider view of this. All right, but the lines that we're looking at are the lines A through G on the bottom. You'll notice that they go all the way from the top to the bottom. Okay, the directions that I added for each igneous rock sample or for each line record the percentage of each mineral as both a percent and the decimal on the data table and then calculate the total density for rock samples A through G. Um, for this to be meaningful we really need to round them to the nearest 0.01. So you're rounding it to 1 one hundredth of a gram per cubic centimeter. Now when I do this I actually find this much easier to turn sideways. Um, unfortunately, if I do that, you'll see I'm not going to be able to see um, the numbers that clearly. This is our data table, and I'm actually going to turn this sideways, and just like I'm doing a profile, I'm going to mark off each segment for each mineral, but I think it would be really helpful if we just number these minerals. So this section represents mineral 7, which was amphibole. This is mineral 5. This is mineral 3. This is mineral 2. And this is mineral 1. So I take my scrap paper, or in this case, the edge of my data table. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with line A and right along line A, I'm going to mark off each segment. So that's mineral 7, that's 5, that's 3, that's 2, and then that's 1. For sample A, and I'll label this A, it seems like the vast majority of it is mineral 1, and mineral 1 is potassium feldspar. Once I've marked off each section, I'm going to slide it up, and we're going to estimate the percentages. So this is a little bit less than 5%, so this one I'm going to do 4%. When you do these calculations, they should add up to exactly 100%, but if they don't, you can go back and modify them and adjust them a little bit. All right, I slide to section 5. 5 is a little bit more than 5. Each one of these is going by 5%. So let's say that this one might be 7%. I slide down. 3 is slightly more than 10, so 3, I'm going to write it down as 11%. Now 2 has a much greater percentage. It's between 25 and 30. So for 2, which is the mineral quartz, I'm going to estimate that to be 28%. And then one, finally, the potassium feldspar. This is the most abundant. If they ask you abundant, they mean highest percentage. And I'm getting this sample as exactly 50%. All right, so I marked off each segment. Now I'm going to try to fill out the data table. If that rock, if that mineral is not present, we're just going to put a dash 
to say that mineral is not present. So we started off with mineral 7, which was amphibol. We saw that as 4%. A percent is the part out of 100. So if I want to go to a decimal, which is really what I'm going to work with, I shift the decimal two places and 4% would be 0.04. There is some biotite, but we measured that as 7%, so that's going to be 0.07. Olivine is not going to be in a felsic igneous rock. There definitely is some plagioclase feldspar. We got the plagioclase, or I estimated it to be 11%. 0.11. Potassium feldspar, pink stuff, is 50% of that, so I'd have to multiply by 0 0.50. There is never pyroxene in a felsic igneous rock, so that's nothing. And quartz, which was the mineral two, the second most abundant one, was 28%, so this is going to be 0.28. Now, we know the density of each mineral, we know the percentage that we have. So to figure out the mass of that, or the density of that percentage, we have to take the density and multiply it by the percentage as a decimal. So I'm going to take my calculator, which should be right here, for the first sample, 0.04 times 3.2, and I get... 0.128. Now, I would make sure I line up my decimal places so it's easier. We have to round, and when we round, you only round the final answer. So each of the steps in between, whatever digits you get, write them down. So for the sum, the total answer, this we're going to round to 0.01 or one one hundredth, but don't round until after you add all your subtotals. Now, biotite, if you're looking at my calculator, it's 7%, so I do 0 0.07, I multiply that by the density, which is 3.00, and when I hit equals, that means this is going to be 0.21. Next one, plagioclase. 0.11, 11% times 2.62, the plagioclase would give you 0.2882. Okay, potassium feldspar. Okay, a very felsic mineral. I've got 0.5, which is half of the mineral, half of the composition. So I'm doing 0.5 times 2.57 and that gives me 1.285. Quartz was 28%, so for the quartz, 0.28 is 28% times 2.65 because that's the density of quartz. When I hit equal, that's going to be point seven four two so at this point all i have to do is add all of these up and then we're going to round to the tenth and that would tell me approximately the density for say granite with a composition of a so 0.742 plus 1.285 plus 0.282 plus 0.21 plus 0.128, I hit equals, and I get that value, which is 1.26532. All right, hundredth is the second decimal. This is a three, so I can't round up. So the answer that I get for this, this felsic igneous rock would have a density of about 0.265 grams per cubic centimeter. All right, so that's how we're going to 
complete the slab. So I did the first one for you, which is A. A goes from here to here. Now you have to do the same thing for each of them. So please pause the tape, try B, and then I will show you what I got. But right now, pause. Great. I'm glad that you are working with this. Now, your percentages don't have to be exactly the same as mine. Okay, these were what I got. Okay, for rock B, which is also granite, I got 15% amphibole. I got 16% biotite. I had no olivine, because olivine doesn't go with that type of rock. For plagioclase feldspar, I had 29%, 8% for the potassium, and 32% for the quartz. When you multiplied and added all of those up together, I got 0.277 grams per cubic centimeter. Now, yours don't have to be exactly the same. You might have had 28% but essentially you should get a value very close to that. All right, good luck. I hope you can finish the lab. Take care.